If your sales stink or your brand, for whatever the reason, feels stale, just pull off a bold rebrand like Emma Chamberlain did with her Chamberlain Coffee rebrand. Don't worry, you don't have to be a social media phenom like Emma to pivot your brand and get better sales. But you must follow the system she used and we're going to share it right here in this video. Now, the reason you might want to rebrand could be the same reason why Emma wanted to rebrand Chamberlain Coffee. Let's see. Why rebrand? Sometimes people rebrand their business because they just don't like their logo or brand name anymore. But there are plenty of reasons beyond that to rebrand. You might need a rebrand because your business is expanding in scope and entering a new market. So maybe your business name is too limiting. Usually though, a rebrand may be in order because your current brand just is not doing anything to differentiate you in the marketplace. Let's take the original branding of Chamberlain Coffee. It was very beige, very bland, kind of, let's be honest, boring. So even though Chamberlain Coffee was leveraging a fresh concept of its product being packaged for single serve use where you could steep it like a bag of tea, the branding didn't stand out even when the concept itself did. So sometimes the concept can be so exciting that it can do all the heavy lifting itself, but here Emma's Chamberlain Coffee was not such a case. And it can be hard to realize that the branding that you like, that you picked, isn't really speaking to your niche or your ideal customer. You've got to be willing to be flexible and change things up like Emma herself did. Remember this, even when you're a member of your own niche, you could be an outlier in terms of your tastes. So if the market is rejecting your branding, you have to be ready to pivot by weaving in branding elements that are currently resonating with your niche. Things like market research and social listening can come in handy here. Emma herself said, quote, I took a blow to my ego a little bit when I had to say, okay, there is a lot I want to change. There is a lot about this that is not the way I wanted it to be. To realize a rebrand needs to happen and that we might have done a few things wrong, to admit that to yourself is tough. But when you do and you fix those problems, everything comes so easily. It's putting your ego aside and just doing it, unquote. As she said otherwise, there was a lack of personality in the brand. So for the good of the brand, Emma swapped out boring beige blah branding for brightly colored bags that not only have personality, every single flavor has its own personality and corresponding cute character too. This sort of approach might not work for every ideal customer avatar out there, but once Team Chamberlain looked into things, they realized that for their avatar, this would work for them. And that's all that matters. Know your niche. Know them not just by their demographics, but their psychographics. Meaning, what do they like to do online and offline when they're out in the real world? Weave those elements into the colors of your brand, the fonts, the personality that you inject into it. Every little bit matters. And look, here's the deal. That kind of research might just lead you to do what Chamberlain Coffee did, which is to expand your brand. Okay, eye-catching packaging can gin up excitement in your base, but that can be all sizzle and no steak, so you've got to back it up with something beefy, pun intended. In the case of Chamberlain Coffee, Emma didn't just have her team change the outward appearance of her products, she increased the product line itself. There's now a larger variety of coffee blends and more ways to order them. Yes, what helps to make them different in the market is the single serve bags. But if you're a traditionalist, you can get the coffee in bags either freshly ground or with whole beans. And yes, you can even get pods too, if that's your thing. You can get tea or matcha. You can get mason jars and tumblers. So the rebrand wasn't just outward packaging. It was going inward to see what more they could offer the public. And you may need to do the same with your brand. Before the rebrand, if you loved coffee, you could be drawn in to Chamberlain Coffee because of Emma herself, but be bored by the packaging or lack of options. 
after the rebrand, maybe the bright packaging and different characters on the packaging catches and holds your attention, but you're more likely to buy because of the wide variety of offerings, such as flavors and forms that they now have for coffee, tea, and matcha lovers. What can you do with your rebrand so that you're providing more of what your ideal customer is looking for? That will play a pivotal part of your rebrand because if you don't do that and you just change your product's appearance, all you're doing is changing color palettes and fonts and otherwise just wasting your time. Because here's the bottom line. Rebranding is a purpose-driven pivot. In the first iteration of Emma's brand, there were grumblings that her offerings were few, plain, and quite frankly, too expensive for the product people were receiving. So sure, the pricing was adjusted downward while the number of brand offerings increased upward. The rebranding was done to pivot the public's perception of Chamberlain Coffee to a more positive place by the company offering more variety, more flavor, and more options for a more convenient price point. And so far, it seems that it's working. Sure, the jewel tone packaging and cute characters are eye-catching, but your ideal customer wants the steak and not just the sizzle. So what can you do to uplevel your offerings to make your ideal customer happier? What's the purpose in your pivot that will prove to your niche that your brand's worth a second look? If you know them well enough, you'll know what you need to do moving forward. Subscribe for more videos about how your next product launch can be wildly successful as though you were a major influencer. And in the meantime, here's a video I already did showing how, by ethically stealing a page from the Logan Paul and KSI's Prime Hydration Playbook, you too have content marketing that converts better and sells out your product.